Welcome back everybody, this is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we've got another gun gripe episode for you. And, alright, there's all this coronavirus stuff going on and we've tried to make a really good effort to pull this thing together. We've been trying to kind of self-isolate a little bit. Um, but we came together because we feel like it's really important to talk about H.R. 5717. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most far-reaching gun bills that's been introduced in a long time. FPC is calling this... Uh, and a gun apocalypse, okay, an encyclopedia of gun laws rolled into one horrible, horrible gun law. And this was uh, introduced by uh, Rep. Hank Johnson here out of Georgia, oddly enough. Hmm. And the bill has, I um, want to say, about 14 or 15 Democrat co-sponsors uh, all around. And this is very, very far-reaching. We are going to dive into this. And I feel like it's really important to make the distinction before we start talking about this bill and how <clears> bad it is. Look, guys, I know there's a lot of people that are home. Y'all are out of work. It's scary right now. I know some people are worried, and they're in, in really hotbed areas uh, with the coronavirus and things that are going on. And uh, I feel like it's really important to make the distinction that when society is at its worst, worst point, okay, when people are scared, when stuff is going on, that's when this legislation gets introduced, is when they see an opportunity to take advantage of a tragedy or take advantage of a disaster or a situation and turn it into something they can politicize and, and get their goals. So that tells you right there that they don't care about the safety of the people. All they care about is politicizing a tragedy and trying to come up with a way to get more power. And that's what's really scary about this bill. So let's go into it a little um, bit. One thing, too, about... The introduction of this bill at this time, I mean, gun sales are very, very high right now. Mm -hmm. Gun sales and ammunition sales are up. People are realizing, hey, you know, I haven't had a gun for self-defense. This is scary. I need something to defend myself with. A lot of people are realizing what the true intent of the Second Amendment really is now. And they're getting off their laurels and putting their partisan politics and their feelings to the side and saying, I need something to defend myself that's better than law enforcement who says, like right now, there's a lot of jurisdictions where law enforcement aren't enforcing like petty theft and such um, because they've got better things to do technically, you know? Right. Um, so it's just funny. It's ironic to me that a bill like this would be introduced when more people are buying guns and realizing, hey, this is what the Second Amendment stands for, but also maybe people aren't paying attention to what's going on outside of the coronavirus right now. Well, what I mean, does that tell you about these Democrats and what they know and really know about their constituents, right? Okay, <clears throat> so there's all these anti-gunners who previously were like, you know, trying to pass anti-gun laws and do all this, and these people are lining up outside of gun stores to get a firearm to protect themselves and protect their families because they realize, you know what, at the end of the day, I'm responsible for protecting my family. Yep. The police aren't going to show up if somebody loots my store. The police aren't going to show up if somebody breaks in my house and steals my TV. Yep. They understand. They're, they're finally starting to understand that the law enforcement does not have a duty to protect you. They don't have an obligation to protect you. Now, mm -hmm. there are a lot of good policemen out there that, yeah, of course they're going to protect you if they can. Just like there's plenty of... Citizens carrying guns that will protect you if they can. Mm -hmm. Lots of good people risk their life to save you if you were in trouble, right? And people are realizing that, that <clears throat> this can't be a, you know, a political issue. This is an issue of rights and human dignity and, and preservation of mm -hmm. liberty. And those things transcend the barriers of politics. And I think mm -hmm. people are starting to see that now. There's, we've got a lot of new gun owners now. As soon as this video is done and we're done making this video, I'm going to make um, a video on gun safety. Okay, I've never done videos like that, but we're going to make a video to try to help some of these new gun owners that are out there. So be looking out for mm -hmm. that. Um, so let's get into what this bill covers or yeah, get anything else. Yeah, just real quick um, about the police not having an obligation to protect you. There actually is a Supreme Court case dated back in 1989 that Colin Noir uh, shared the other day. Uh, DeShaney versus Winnebago, the court held that the failure by the government workers to protect someone, in this case, a four-year-old boy from physical violence or harm from another person, in this case his father, did not breach any substantive uh, constitutional duty. 
Right. So they do not have a constitutional obligation to protect you. You are responsible for yourself. So anyways, let's I get into seriously it. do think <clears throat> that the reason these people push so hard for anti-gun legislation, they want guns to get to be hard to get. They don't want you to protect yourself. That's the mm. core value is that they want you to have to rely on government or feel like you have to rely on government. It actually creates a snowball effect, mm. okay? So by more people being disarmed, then more people get hurt killed, uh, raped, you know, mm -hmm. um, involved in crimes, right? No matter what that crime might be, they become victims of crimes because they are conditioned to think that protecting themselves is somehow not the right option for them to, to have to do, right? Yep. But then what happens is it creates a snowball effect of crime, and then they go, well, see, what we did isn't working, so we need more, and only the criminals are, are going to have guns, and, yep. and then they're going to be able to go, oh, police state, police state, socialism, like that's what they want. Yep. The bare bones reasons for this is power. It's a power grab, okay? So we're going to dive into mm -hmm. this. This is a terrible bill, and before we even get into anything, it's important that you guys know, okay, look, I know a lot of folks are out of work, and it's scary. And look, I, I know some of you guys are truck drivers, nurses, y'all are out there, you know, putting in the work and y'all are at risk. And, and we really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know a lot of you are probably got more overtime than you're ever going to know what to do with because of this. And I know some of you mm -hmm. are out of work and suffering and we feel for you guys. And, and I'm sorry. I mean, I wish mm -hmm. there was something better, but take that as an opportunity. If you're one of the people that's at home and you're mad right now about this being submitted, it's a perfect time to contact your reps. Okay, if these guys are going to go through the effort to put this bill in and, and try to strip you of your rights, then we need to come together as a community and we've got to squash this thing. Right. We need everybody talking about it. We need everybody contacting the reps. We need everybody breaking out the pitchforks and the torches. Okay, well, there's no better time to do it. We've got to squash this thing yep. right now. And we cannot allow the Democrats to use this bill as a bargaining chip. On that, um, on on the, uh, um, what are they the call it? Coronavirus um, relief. Yeah, the yeah, the relief. Deal. Okay, yeah, the the relief package that they're mm. putting together for coronavirus. It was recently shot down. Okay, they're like, oh, we have con some concessions. So now Pelosi's trying to say, oh, well, if you don't put ten thousand dollars of of um, debt forgiveness for student aid in this package for every person that has student loans, we're not going to pass it. Well, what is a coronavirus? Uh, relief Act have to do with student aid. So see, they're trying to bargain. They're trying to use your safety and your health against you. They're using that money that people need as a bargaining chip. And I guarantee you that 5717 or something like it, or any other far-reaching amount of, of other things they want are going to be used as a, or try to use as a bargaining chip. So don't just tell your representatives to oppose 5717. You need to tell them that Americans want the relief package because they need it and not to let the Democrats play political pool mm -hmm. with your relief. Mm -hmm. They are withholding that knowing that mm -hmm. they can use it to hold over your head to get something else snuck in that they want. It's and called that's dangerous. It's called earmarks. Ooh, they're dangerous. All right, so all right, so let's get into this. Um, but but look, guys, we're with you. Okay, yep. we're all in this together. We're gonna get through this. Okay, let's talk about it. All right, so this is from uh, Firearms Pol Policy <clears throat> Coalition. All right, so HR fifty seven seventeen would create a national gun registry, ban almost all semi automatic firearms, institute a federal magazine ban, implement national red flag laws. Tax guns at 30% and ammo at 50%. Um, ban patriots under 21 from exercising their Second Amendment rights. Uh, ration guns by making it illegal to purchase more than one firearm in a 30-day period. Force safe storage requirements on gun owners. Ban home builds. Ban suppressors. Force FFLs to spend massive amounts of money to comply with the new security requirements. Expand gun-free zones. Yeah, because that's really worked in the past. And uh, more than we could possibly list here in this space. <laughs> it is a far-reaching gun bill. Dude, okay, man. And it's horrible. And they're basically trying to squash 2A culture in one generation. Yep. I mean, this is so infringing. I mean, to me, the Second Amendment is the most clear language in the Constitution. Shall not be infringed. Okay? That's a very, very clear language. Okay, so I don't understand why 
when something happens, they just want to come out and infringe on it. And there's all these gun laws that are already on the books, and there's all these things going on, and the left is lining up out of gun gun store doors to buy firearms to protect themselves because they realize, hey, this ain't political. I got to protect myself, right? So if there's Democrats that own guns, mm -hmm. there's Republicans that own guns. <clears throat> and now, now there, there's Republicans that support gun control. I'm definitely not going to say they're not out there. There's rhinos out there, whatever. But if, if it is, in fact, and this is not political pandering or trying to push, you know, oh, this side versus that side, because we try not to do that, but... If it is, in fact, a list of Democrats, because it is, okay? I mean, I can't change that fact. The fact is, this bill was introduced by Democrats, yep. okay? So Sorry. if it's Democrats that are introducing all this legislation, and if you are said Democrat that votes for it, said Democrats, you probably want to get on the phone and tell these people you disagree. It's okay to be a Democrat and be a gun owner, okay? I guess... The way you would look at it, at least for me, is like, okay, uh, social Democrat, fiscal Republican. You know, there's lots of people that are sort of in that uh, type of area, right? You know, they believe in <clears throat> gay marriage. They believe in uh, whatever, you know, all of these things. You know, they, they may be atheists or they may not, you know, there may be any other <clears throat> number of social reasons <clears throat> that they're Democrat but maybe they, they understand fiscal responsibility and they want to control big government and spending. Look, no matter what camp you're in, I don't care, okay? This thing is way bigger than a political party. Mm -hmm. It's way bigger than a single person. This is a generational seizing of liberty. Mm -hmm. That and, and they're not going to ask, are you Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, are you Independent? They don't care what your political uh, motivations might be. That's irrelevant, okay? They want your guns. <clears throat> That's the bottom line. Right. They want the power, and right. they don't care. So check this out. All right, so here's something else. I was kind of browsing through this last night, and this is something that I found <laughs> pretty interesting. Um, in Title VIII, uh, Industry Reform, Section 802, repeal of exclusion of pistols, revolvers, and other firearms from consumer safety product laws. All right, so if you guys aren't familiar with consumer safety product laws, it's like um, products that are considered like hazardous, okay, are banned. Okay, so you go over here to um, the consumer safety product laws themselves, uh, consumer product safety rule. The term consumer product safety rule means a consumer product safety standard described in section 2056A of this title or rule under this chapter declaring a consumer safety product banned hazardous product. Right. So that's how you'd get around like a handgun ban is con uh, basically just including them in a consumer safety uh, hazardous product list. Right. Okay. So that's how they get around that kind of crap. Yeah. Just so as far reaching entirely. as all this other language is, <clears throat> and as bad as all this other language is, if they say, oh, well, you know, the Consumer Product Safety Commission says that this gun, this gun is too dangerous to sell, therefore it's banned completely. Like yeah. you just can't sell it. We're going to tell the manufacturer you can't make it anymore. That's pretty scary. License to own firearms and ammunition. And not only that, but then that also gets into like lawsuits mm -hmm. and liability. They want to open up gun companies to be sued when, you know, there's a tragedy or something happens. I mean, it's just scary. Yeah, because that, that was... Um, going to bankrupt the gun industry. Um, Lawful Traffic and Arms Act, or I can't remember what it was called. Um, but anyways, basically, if, if somebody uses a, a firearm product to commit a crime... Uh, you know, the, the victim can't come after the firearms manufacturer. It's the same thing that happens in the auto industry. I mean, if, like we said before, okay, if a drunk driver takes a Honda Civic and plows through a crowd of people or, you know, gets in a head-on collision with somebody else, the victim family or the victim's family can't sue Honda for that person's actions. I mean, that is definitely a slippery slope and a bad day right there for everybody. And it's for every, not, not just the gun industry, but for every industry. 105 I mean. people <clears throat> die in vehicle collisions every day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if <clears throat> we said, oh, well, if, you, if your family member got killed in a car wreck today, you need to call and sue the crap out of the car company. There wouldn't be any car companies. Yep. They wouldn't be able to afford to stay in business because 100 people die every day. Now, I'm not saying <clears throat> that guns don't hurt people. Yes, they do. But it's people that hurt people. The gun is merely a tool, okay? You can't blame a tool for the will of the person, right? That's just, that's crazy. That's the same as saying, all right, well, all these hundred people 
that die every single day in car wrecks, you get to sue the crap out of auto manufacturers. So what happens when there's no more cars to drive because the, the car plants can't stay in business because they're getting sued out of existence. Mm -hmm. They want that to be able to occur with gun companies. You know, something happens, they get sued out of existence. Oh, well, one less company to sell guns. So see, they want to cripple the entire industry with this bill. This bill is a crippling blow to your rights, to the firearms industry, and to good human decency. It goes completely against all the good things that make America what it is. You know, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And to, to do so in whatever means that you deem necessary. And to use whatever tools necessary to accomplish the task. Yep. So with this And the, the cops are not responsible for your safety. So exactly. that tells you everything right there. So the big thing with this bill is it's being introduced in a time where people are frightened and they're concerned for their safety. They're buying guns at an unprecedented rate and buying ammunition at an unprecedented rate. They're buying firearms that this bill would ban because they are the best tools for the job. They're the best tools to, f to defend yourself and your family and your community ultimately with. Okay? Yep. So for for a, a, a representative to introduce a bill like this is just the ultimate kind of FU to the common people and the, 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 the largest amount of elitism that you can possibly imagine crammed into one person. I mean, how dare you think that you are better than everyone else that you're going to take away everyone's right to own a firearm to defend themselves with, especially when the cops aren't coming to help you. I mean, we've already seen it, like I said earlier in the video, that you know petty theft and other minor crimes are not going to be processed right now at all. The cops are not going to respond to those calls. So The guy that introduced this bill is the same guy that said that if you put too many troops on Guam, it's going to flip over in the ocean. Oh, God. Th that guy, dude. That, that's this guy. Oh, God. That's him? Yes. Oh, Lord. That guy's an idiot. Dude. Well, This is scary, but look, guys. Don't uh, panic. We the people will persevere. We always will. Contact your reps. <clears throat> tell them that our rights are not a bargaining chip. Tell them mm -hmm. that you don't appreciate a tragedy being politicized for a statist agenda. Yep. Tell them that you don't appreciate your rights being used as a bargaining tool to block aid and prevent aid from getting to the American people who desperately need it right now. Only the worst parts of your society and the best parts of your society get pushed out during a pandemic, during a disaster, during a hurricane, whatever. Look at all the confiscations during Katrina. Now, we won't get into that. Now, they got sued over that crap and they quit doing it. <laughs> but until they got sued, they're like, take them because reasons, right? Wasn't so, it the mayor of New Orleans just it recently was, it was, that right? uh, wanted to institute that again? Like right. basically banning firearm sales in New now, Orleans? Now, that's, that's a different talk. But these tragedies, whether they be man-made or not, bring out the best and worst of our society, okay? The best of our society, okay, here in Georgia, all right, let's compare uh, Mr. Hank Johnson here to another upstanding company in Georgia. Chick-fil-A made an announcement, said, if you're hungry and you can't afford a sandwich, you just go to Chick-fil-A and they'll give you a free sandwich. So, wait a minute. Brings out the best and the worst in society. So you got a company saying, if you're hungry, our company's not going to stand for you going hungry and starving. We're not going to let our citizens starve. We'll give you a free sandwich, okay? So Chick-fil-A is going to give you a free sandwich, all right? So that brings out the best of society, all right? All these nurses putting themselves at risk every day, fighting to try to save people, right? Without the proper N95 protective masks and other PPE that they need to protect themselves and their families that they come in contact with every day. So it brings out the best in society, the scientists that are working their butts off every single day to fight this evil, uh, invisible bastard, okay? <laughs> it brings out the worst in society because then you have snakes in the grass like Hank Johnson who go, oh, I see an opportunity to bite someone on the leg as they walk by. It brings out the best and the worst. This is the worst. It's not political. It doesn't matter if you're left, right. I don't care if you're socialist, communist, or if you're whatever. Okay, none of that matters at this point. You are an American citizen. Okay, I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, what side of the fence you're on, none of that matters to me. LGBT, <clears throat> if, you're, if you're in that community, I support you. 
right? Mm -hmm. We're all Americans here. We've all got a common goal, and that's to survive and take care of our families. And those goals transcend political barriers. These people are trying to set us back. We've taken five steps forward as a society. They want us to take 20 steps back. Mm -hmm. This will put American culture back an oh, entire generation or more. All the hard gains that people like Chad and I have fought for over the last 12, 13 years on this YouTube channel will be for nothing if we don't fight this thing and squash it before it has a chance to grow. The best and worst of your society. Throughout this whole thing, you remember who the best and the worst are. And you support the good people moving forward. And the bad people, you put them by the wayside. Indeed. Nothing else needs to be said. That's pretty scary. So, look, guys, <clears throat> contact your reps. Do it for me. If you yep. don't do anything else, look, I know a lot of people are home. Please, contact your reps. Let them know that you oppose 5717. Thank you, guys. Look, America will persevere. We will, okay? Don't let this thing get to you. But don't sit on the sidelines. Fight this. Don't assume it won't go anywhere. Don't assume it won't be used as a bargaining tool. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you next time. Many more videos on the way, and we're working our butts off here, okay? So we'll see you soon. See you guys.